Well, folks, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is, since it is no longer Pride Month, we can no longer pander to the gays. However, the good news is that since it's Canada Day, we can absolutely pander to the Canadians! <laughs> no, not the Canadians! Curse you, Mr. Maildown, and your stupid pussy poser woke agenda! <laughs> That's right, metalheads of the internet, it's Canada Day, and in order to commemorate this glorious day and event, we will be reviewing every single studio album from legendary, influential, Juno award-winning, French-Canadian death metal crew, Cryptopsy. As per the norm with videos of this type and variety, I am not interested in EPs, demos, live albums, compilations, or anything released by any kind of solo project or side project. I am interested only in the eight studio albums released by Cryptopsy, and we will be talking about each of them in order of release and assigning each a score out of five. First up, we have Blasphemy Made Flesh, released in November 1994 via Invasion Records, and I'm almost as old as this album. In fact, its birthday is only a couple of days after mine. I'm not really sure how to feel about this information. I'm, uh... Yikes. I'm getting old. Anyways, honestly, nearly 30 years later, this thing is still a fucking beast filled with pulverizing and pummeling percussion and riffs, disgusting vocals. It's very tight and technical and cohesive despite having this very like raw, unhinged kind of energy to it. Like it still has this very primal, rabid, hectic, crazed kind of feel and vibe. There's just so much fun and brutal stuff here, like the towering guitars and those slick, slimy, and occasionally maybe accidentally funky bass licks in opening cut defenestration, the dueling, soaring, slightly ominous twin guitar leads on the latter half of Abigor, the slow, beefy, stewy, chunky, kind of ugly beatdowns of Mutant Christ, as well as the pure, as well as just the pure, raw, crushing death metal brutality of Born Headless, Memories of Blood. Swine of the Cross as well has those hard-hitting, churning grooves, which I'm really digging. Overall, I mean, it's just a really fun, classic, like, old-school 90s death metal record. I'm feeling a strong 4 to 5. It's still fun and great and cool after all these years. There's maybe an argument to be made that it could be a little bit more polished and refined in, in some places and in some aspects, but, like, I don't know. I think it holds up. I think it's great. It's raw and brutal and gnarly, which is ultimately all you want from an album of this type from this time. So fuck it. I stand by my four to five. Next up, we have None So Vile, released in July 1996 via Wrong Again Records, one of the most influential, iconic, and critically acclaimed technical and brutal death metal albums, not just of the 90s, but possibly of all time. And it's very easy to see why. If you know who Cryptopsy are, it's very likely because of this album. People love this album. And I am one of those people because holy sweet Jesus Kentucky Fried fuck on a stick. This thing is fucking brutal. It succeeds for a lot of the same reasons that Blasphemy Made Flesh succeeded, except it's bigger and more menacing and it's beefier and it's just freakier and more extreme. The guitars are louder and more brutal. The percussion is more precise and just the production of the drums itself, like it has this very clear, dynamic, punchy sound. The snares, the cymbals, the toms, everything. I mean, every little tap on that little drum kit sounds like a little machine gun firing off. And even if Lord Worm is putting in what would be described today as a pretty standard, brutal death metal vocal performance, it's still a solid one. Like, he still sounds pretty fucking brutal. There are some pretty mean fucking gutturals on this bad boy. The whole record is just so visceral and violent, too. I mean, cuts like Crown of Horns, Grave of the Fathers, Orgiastic Disembowelment, Slit Your Guts, they're filled with, like, these vicious fucking grooves and these gnarly fucking riffs, and it's so unhinged and all over the place, but in a really extreme, controlled manner, like you're on a really fucked up wooden roller coaster. 
The aforementioned Slit Your Guts remains one of my favorite Cryptopsy songs to this day, as does Benedictine Convulsions, especially with its, like, really powerful climax. You've got those menacing, consuming gutturals and, like, those churning, slow-moving riffs and grooves, kind of transitioning into some more janky, jagged, almost Voivod-esque kind of, like, technical metal poundings. I am feeling a wickedly, stupidly enthusiastic 4.5 to 5 on this bad boy. I will very likely face some controversy uh, for daring not to give this a 5 to 5, and I can understand why, to a certain extent, this is a very popular, very iconic album. But, as I've said many a time here on The Metal Meltdown, I really try to only give 5 to 5 scores to albums that are not only truly perfect, but to albums that, like, really just fuck my shit up and rock my fucking world, you know? Like, it's not a coincidence that albums that I've given a 5 out of 5 in the past are also albums that have, like, emotionally devastated me or just totally wowed me with some groundbreaking fusion of sounds and styles. Okay, well, I will concede that when we're doing these videos, sometimes I give these scores to albums that I have, like, a super nostalgic attachment to, but... Uh, nevertheless, we can nitpick and fight and argue over not agreeing that this is the greatest thing literally ever made, but surely most of us can agree this is a great album, it's an incredible album, it has stood the test of time, it's still one of the best brutal death metal records ever fucking made, check it out if you haven't done so already. Next up, we have Whisper Supremacy, released in September 1998 via Century Media Records, the first Cryptopsy album to feature friend of the Metal Meltdown channel, Mike DeSalvo, on lead vocals. Hello, Mike. How are you? What's up? I'm gonna make a potentially bold and spicy argument here, but honestly, I think the Mike DeSalvo era of Cryptopsy in general is pretty underrated. Like, sure, Whisper Supremacy isn't as raw as the last two albums, but personally, I like the cleaner, more polished sound and production. And if we're being really honest here, I also think Mike is maybe a stronger vocalist than Lord Worm. And like, I'm actually able to understand most of what he's saying, which I think is a good thing. I think if you're singing, you want people to know what you're singing about? I don't know, call me crazy. Call me fucking crazy. I don't see that as a fucking negative. I don't need all death metal vocals to just be, you know, like it's, it's fine. Anyways, a lot of cool songs on here. Cold Hate, Warm Blood, Emaciate, Loathe, as well as White Worms, Serpent's Coil, Depths You Fallen, tons of great cutthroat fucking grooves, powerful blast beats, some clever, brutal progressions. I'm honestly feeling a solid, enthusiastic 3.5 to 5 on this bad boy. I think it's a very good record that has held up very well and is very underrated. Like, yeah, sure, I get it. Some people don't like the more polished kind of death metal production. Some people want everything to be dirty and raw. I get it. That's fine. But I don't know, man. There's still some pretty gnarly, brutal stuff here. I, I would say check it out, honestly. Next up, we have And Then You'll Beg, released in October 2000 via Century Media Records. And to be honest, you can copy and paste a lot of what I just said about Whisper Supremacy, place it here, and we're probably okay. We're not really seeing a huge change in, like, style or sound or production on this bad boy. Everything that Cryptopsy was doing on that album is more or less intact here. I would say that Mike's vocals are a little bit more barky and shouty on this one. I would also say that the guitars are a little louder and have a more consuming kind of, like, feel to them. But, like, overall, if you liked Whisper Supremacy, there's a very good chance you're also gonna like And Then You'll Beg. I genuinely think that the closing number, Screams Go Unheard, is the most underrated song in the entire Cryptopsy catalog. I love its really slow and unorthodox and, like, really creepy intro with all these, like, distorted vocals and these kind of, like tribal kind of like percussive elements and woodwinds and stuff which then launches into a full-blown avalanche of like late 90s fucking death metal brutality some really fun over-the-top guitar work here some more unhinged like vocal spats from mike on this cut as well and you know cuts like we bleed my prodigal son voice of reason it's, it's everything that you want from, like, late 90s death metal, you know? Soar and Envision, Soar Vision as well has some really great, like, technical bass and guitar interplay. Like, so many great licks and riffs and moments and melodies. Just a really fun, weird cut. 
3.5 out of 5, once again, I don't care what anyone says, the Mike DeSalvo era of Cryptopsy is underrated, it deserves to be looked at and appreciated, do so if you haven't done so already, please and thank you. Next up, we have Once Was Not, released in October 2005 via Century Media Records, and this is where we start to see an actual dip in the quality of, of Cryptopsy's music. I don't think this is a bad record per se, but it's definitely not exciting me or thrilling me in the way that None So Vile did and not even in the way that Whisper Supremacy did. I do like that the album and its lyrics have a more epic tone and feel, and I do like that simultaneous to that we do have a more grim, sinister kind of production, like it is a little dirtier. But I don't know, man, the songs aren't as cutthroat, they aren't as brutal, they aren't as punishing, they aren't as technical. They're still solid, there's still some fun moments here and there. Carrie and Shine and Keeping the Cadaver Dogs at Bay. These are some nice, fun, meaty death metal cuts. The Pestilence That Walk F in Darkness and The Kingdom Where Everything Dies have some more dramatic moments, which I like. But overall, musically, still a step down. Like, it's just not as dynamic, not as exciting, and not as memorable. And things are not helped by returning vocalist Lord Worm putting in a pretty lackluster performance. Gone are the monstrous, consuming, low-end guttural sprawls, and in their place we have these more timid, snorty, nasally, kind of like barks and grunts that, to be honest, I would associate more so with, like, Six Feet Under era Chris Barnes. He does, to be fair, sound a little bit more energized on some cuts, like Curse of the Great, but overall, it's also a massive step down for him. I'm feeling a very unenthusiastic 2.5 out of 5 on this bad boy. I don't think it's incompetent or horrible. It's just kind of like, okay, it exists. It's an album. There's at least a few songs I can recommend, namely the ones I've mentioned. I do like some of the more epic and dramatic moments. I just wish that everything else was more dynamic and more brutal and we got better vocals from Lord Worm. Like, there's a lot here that can or at least could work. It just isn't. Not here on this album, in this capacity, arranged in this fashion. And now, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, we arrive to The Unspoken King, released in May 2008, once again via Century Media Records. Undeniably, inarguably, the band's most controversial album. It's, it's their equivalent to a Saint Anger or an Illidivinum Insanus. Cryptopsy fans hate this album because it made a drastic change to the sound and it fucked shit up for quite some time. And I'm inclined to mostly agree. I, I don't hate this with the passion of some, but it is definitely a very low point in the Cryptopsy catalog and very likely the worst album they've ever made. For this album, Cryptopsy are bringing in more melodic elements, more breakdowns as well, very reminiscent of the kind of stuff that you would hear from like underground metalcore and deathcore at the time. I don't hate that idea in theory, but the execution is just really sloppy and jarring. Like, it definitely feels like the band is more interested in sounding and appearing brutal to a younger audience than they are in, like, just actually making really cool, good songs. Like, the album is a little bit more hectic and crazed and random even, I would say. We have technical sections that segue into breakdowns, that segue into, like, more like death metal, deathcore kind of like barrages with blast beats and riffs. The album just ends up feeling really clumsy by design. It feels eccentric and experimental for the sake of being eccentric and experimental. It feels like they're trying too hard to appeal to like a younger audience that at that time might have been listening to like deathcore music being released at that time. Which is funny because like if you put this up next to like Suicide Silence, uh, Carnifex, All Shall Perish music of the time, the Doom EP from Job for a Cowboy, that stuff just absolutely wipes the floor with this, in my opinion. Like, if the goal was to sound more brutal and energetic and modern, you absolutely fucking failed. The moody, clean vocals and keyboard arrangements as well, like, I, I genuinely cringe. They're so unnecessary and poorly implemented. Solid 1.5 out of 5 on this bad boy. It's not a good record. In fact, it's a pretty bad one. Definitely the worst in the Cryptopsy discography. And it's a shame because, again, I, I think that there are some things on here that, in theory, could work, but they just, they just don't. So, yeah. 
Moving on! Next up, we have a self-titled album, Cryptopsy, released independently in September 2012. With this record, Cryptopsy returned to a more traditional kind of Cryptopsy sound, lying somewhere between the realms of Nun So Vile and Whisper Supremacy. It's very technical and very brutal, but it does have a lot of polish and refinement and more modern production. Matt sounds way more comfortable and way more confident on lead vocals. The music across the board is just better written, better executed. The band just sounds a lot more inspired and excited. They sound less confused. Songs like Two Pound Torch, Shag Harbor's Visitors, Red Skin Scapegoat, they all go viciously, stupidly hard. Pummeling, brutal, dynamic, with a lot of speed, a lot of energy. Love that we're still trying to switch things up a little bit too, though. Like, Ominous, for instance, is a really slow-paced, menacing little monster. There's arguably still a little bit of deathcore influence in the band with this particular cut, might I add, especially in some of those, like, slamming sections and those slow-churning riffs and those kinds of breakdowns. But I think it actually works really well. Like, it's kind of like if, if Suffocation did deathcore. That's kind of what this sounds like, you know? A few melodic elements remain intact as well. Like, there's some subtle elements on the Golden Square Mile, which I thought were actually pretty solid and kind of elevated the, the grim feel and the brutality of the cut. I am feeling a very strong, very enthusiastic 3.5 out of 5 on this one. Very close, maybe even to a 4 out of 5. I kind of forgotten how solid this record was. I'd kind of forgotten how good it was. I'd kind of forgotten about it entirely. Not gonna lie. I was happy to revisit it, and I hope that you do the same and also you enjoy it. And finally, this brings us to the Juno Award winning As Gamora Burns, released in September of last year, 2023, via Nuclear Blast Records. I thoroughly enjoyed this album when it came out. I said it was one of the best, if not the best, things Cryptopsy had done since Matt joined the band, and probably maybe even, like, since None So Vile. I really enjoyed this album when it came out, and when we reviewed it less than a year ago, like nine months ago ish, I believe. And I remember saying that out of everything Cryptopsy have done within like the past 20 years or so, this is probably the best thing and I stand by that claim 110%. Like, I know that Cryptopsy did release music for the 2010s, for the Book of Suffering EPs, Tome 1 and Tome 2, but if you had told me that they had been working on this album ever since the self-titled album over the course of 11 years, I'd fucking believe you. It's just so fucking fierce, so fucking brutal, so fucking powerful. It feel, it's like a smorgasbord of everything that Cryptopsy has done so well. A combination of the best elements of None So Vile, Whisper Supremacy, the self-titled album. Obesient, Godless Deceiver, Flayed the Swine, Praise the Filth all go wickedly stupidly hard. Technical, potent, spicy, brutal death metal jams and riffs and beatdowns galore. Matt sounds fantastic on vocals as well. The production gives everything so much energy and flavor and body. Like, the riffs are so thick and so sharp, and the drums are so potent, so powerful and striking. Vocally, too, Matt is at his most expressive and dynamic here. He fully shows off his range of vocal styles, like tons of gutturals and high screams and potent barks and growls. I think at the time I gave this a very enthusiastic 4 to 5, and that's the score that I would give this album again today. It's a great record. It was a great record when we first reviewed it. It's a great record now. They deserve their Juno. They deserve all the success that they're enjoying right now. It's fucking great. How many more times can I say great? Anna, how many times can I say great? How many more times? Uh, at least 12 more times. 12 more times. Great, 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 great. All right, cool. Are we good? Yeah. All right, as Gamora burns. Great. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. We did it. Reviewing every Kip Cryptopsy album for Canada Day, for Canada Day, for the day where we drink maple syrup and eat poutine. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Now it's your turn to tell me. How would you rank everything in their discography? How would you score everything in their discography? Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Did I get it somewhere in the middle? What's your favorite Cryptopsy record? What's your least favorite Cryptopsy record? Tell me in the comments or on Discord. Either one's fine. Press this button to subscribe. Look, more videos. Holy shit, how did they get there? And as always, you have yourself 
a fantastic fucking day.